Go ahead. Well, hi, everybody, and I want to thank you all for being here. It's been an honor to, to host you. Um, so I began this job in September of 2008. You all know what happened in September of 2008. So, um, and within a month of my arrival, our budget from the city of Philadelphia was cut by 20%. And then about a month later, my budget from the state of, or the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania was cut by 30%. So down $12 million in a, and it had nothing to do with me. I, I kept saying it was my arrival here. No, 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 it had nothing to do with me. Um, so everything I thought I was going to do when I took this job in 2008 um, was c completely suspended. And, and I want to say probably for the first three years of my tenure here, it was budgets, budgets, budgets. Um, and you had a, and when I realized that when you lose this kind of money, you really can't continue operating the way you had when you had $12 million in the positive direction. So we set out to uh, begin a multi-year strategic planning process and um, because I had to figure out how we were going to hit the restart button, having lost 117 positions, half of my library materials, budget, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but I'm not a person that likes to cry in my soup um, because I love the idea of um, squaring your shoulders and bringing everybody along um, with me for the, for the big change that was about to occur here. And we have been through tremendous change in this library, both physically um, from a staffing, um, the complement of staffing, as well as our relationship with community. It's been an imperative that we be able to do this. And so, um, so the, the, literally the strategic planning process took over two years to do. And we went through this um, um, scenario planning uh, process for the first year, and that was all trying to define if you never got another dime back, what is your life going to look like? If you had more money than God could ever put in front of you, what would you do there? And then there were two scenarios in the middle. And the idea behind the scenario planning is that at some point in time, this will happen. And how do you pivot to be able to go in any one of these directions? I found it inordinately exciting and interesting. My board hated the process with every fiber of their being. Uh, both boards, I have three boards here um, because we have uh, uh, the governing board, which is the board of trustees, which is 50% appointed by the mayor, and the other 50% is self-sustaining. The foundation board, which is my fundraising and advocacy board, and then we have a board of directors of the Rosenbach Museum and Library, which we took responsibility for three years ago. And so that's a lot of management. It's 100 board members to manage and try and bring them along at the same time. Um, I see shaking heads, and thank you. I thank you for thank you for the emotion around that. <laughs> but what I also what we also realized. So what we knew is that, um, and I brought it in. Part of the understanding was so when we finished scenario planning, we moved into then okay, st creating the strategic plan with 12 objectives. We rewrote our mission statement from something that was three paragraphs, and I challenged anybody to re remember one word of that of that vision, mission and vision statement too. Advancing literacy, guiding learning, and inspiring curiosity. It's six words that sort of carry us through to this day. And then the vision statement is about um, supporting an enlightened community for lifelong learning. So, um, so with that um, was how it is we were going to break up the staff so they became more community-centric. I mean, so you don't know this whole system, but it is a system of very, it's an old city with old libraries and an old infrastructure. And uh, the average age of the employee at the time was 53. It is now 39 um, because the city uh, has a drop program, deferred retirement option plan, and everybody was flooding because they didn't want to know from me being here. So everybody was flooding into the drop program. But what it said was that what do we need to do to organize ourselves differently? And what do we need to do to assume when you have that much, um, a low, that much of a lower budget, what do your partnerships have to, what does the partnership have to look like? Because there was no way we were going to continue to do the work that we were doing all by ourselves. So it began, we began really studying the concept of partnerships um, when it came to community-based asset building. And so our partnerships are all about understanding, does a partnership educate, does it innovate, does it, is it collaborative, and is it sustainable? And if they can't, and we can't answer any of those questions, then we're probably not going to get involved because we've had some pretty crappy partnerships all along. But, you know, rebuilding that concept about how it is collaboration and sustainability in addition to the matching of the missions and the, and the shared vision of the partnership has been essential. So one of the things um, we were asked to uh, consider was, and I think Mike DeBaradine has talked about this yesterday afternoon, was we are the backbone agency for the Read by Fourth initiative here in the city, which is all about ensuring that our children are reading a grade level. 
um, by the time they get to fourth grade. And with that is the collective impact partnership of 90 partners that we have working to ensure our children are, are gonna get there. Initially, we started out on six years. Uh, I think it's gonna, we're in it until it's, ha until it's done, and I think it's gonna take longer than six years. But So that's one of the big key partnerships. Another key partnership is about um, how it is we support the workforce development um, initiatives here in the city. We have another collective impact project with five other partners in Southwest Philadelphia, one of the poorest con uh, communities in the city, and we're working with um, the housing the urban housing department, a local um, career links, and two others. But it is about how it is you bring a community that where the unemployment rate is over 27% um, to to begin to understand what it's going to take for that individual to to understand what they have inside them to become a strong employee. And we work with our partners to uh, pull that off as well. So we have, I mean, all of these partners have been an essential growth opportunity for us. Um, but you know, part of the one of the most important partners that we should have is the school district because, um, as we all know, how tough it is to work in alignment with your school district. But I think one of those things, if we're going to ensure that the children and families in the city are successful, we've got to have a better relationship with the school district. Our current um, school district administrator, his name is Bill Height, is a fabulous guy, and he's and probably the first time in my 30 plus years in library land that I have actually a working relationship with the, sc with this, um, the school district leader. Um, it's just getting it down to the local principal level who and the principals in our schools actually have a tremendous amount of autonomy. And when you're teaching, teaching to the test, you know, that's all that, it, all that matters. And so, um, so we're trying to come about this in a different way and have worked with a number of uh, projects in order to be able to um, work with teachers more directly because there are no libraries in the schools here in Philadelphia. There are no librarians, let me just say that, uh, in the schools here in Philadelphia. Um, there's a handful in the, in the K through eight, um, and they're mandated in the high schools, but in the K through eight, there's only like a handful, five, maybe six, in the 200 um, grammar schools there are in the city. So, so <clears throat> we become the default library, and that we, you know, building that curriculum support for the school after school role that we play has been an interesting but challenging opportunity. How am I doing on time? And do, uh, um, doing okay. Okay, good. So, um, so, so as we all know, we're building that relationship with the school district has been um, really critical. So, also, um, so, so this, it's, so this relationship building and this community asset building has been um, key to how it is we had to rethink our organization. So we built. What we did was change our structure from aligning in four quadrants of the city, which we called areas, to now four, the now nine clusters. And each, in each cluster, there's an average of six libraries. And each of the clusters are led by a cluster leader whose job essentially is to be the library director of that cluster. And so their role really is about professional development and community building and um, providing a different level of support. And the goal, we're not there yet, and um, is to really push decision making down so that our neighborhood library leaders are actually making the decisions for what happens in their library. Because what we'd love to do is push decision making up so that, you know, so if we don't have enough staff, you know, what is it going to take for you to be able to call around to the other five libraries and figure out how it is we're going to get the six libraries open that day? It's tough. We, we still have a lot of our administrators still sort of taking on the responsibility rather than pushing the decision making down. The goal, the, the second goal in that, in doing that, is that I'm trying to build um, a succession planning uh, process here, so to really identify who is the next generation of leadership here for the library. Because when I came in, you know, when you lose all of these people in the drop program, there's a whole lot of intelligence that went with that. Um, so to really build um, project management, really so is one of the goals here, is really about building project management. And so the cluster leaders are responsible for going out and building the community around, letting the library sort of lead the process, but we don't want to have to own it forever. And the, and it's, and the idea here is that you create um, an undergirding for the community. Who's out there? How are they out there? Where are they? And how do we come together on a regular basis in a community council? That's what we're defining it. 
um, so that the community doesn't have to go flapping about. I talked about this a little bit yesterday uh, morning when I met you. Um, and it's, it's, that's a process where we have brought in um, community organizers to help us think through this process. And all of these community leaders, all of my uh, cluster leaders have been through the Harwood Institute um, training. And that's essential, um, important programming for all of us as we begin to think about neighborhood building.